Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this community showdown between the Beastmen who shall be led by Robane Fantasy facing off against the Dinosaurs who shall be led by the dreaded Papa Palpatine. Now, as far as the Beastmen build goes here in the front line, it's going to be a, you know, pretty much classic Beastmen. For the longest time, Beastmen armies have been pretty much chaff-centric, with the most popular choice being the very cheap, very, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say cost-effective per se, but they have a high model count, relatively good melee defense for their price point. You know, they, they do the job. So what you see is Ungor Spearmen backed up by either Minotaurs or Razorgors, and that is going to be the case here in this matchup. And against the prevalence of like Chameleon Skinks and many of the annoying ranged poke that the Dinos do have, having a cheap shielded unit with a little bit of anti-large, you know, doesn't hurt. So it is going to be Ungor Spearmen backed up by Razorgors in the backfield for some mass and armor piercing. We have Torox the Brass Chungus coming in here against ye old dinosaurs. And, you know, he has good armor piercing, good mass, and high armor, so... Many of the lizard units, of course, aside from some of the new ones, actually, like the Troglodon and things like that, don't have the craziest armor piercing. So him having 130 armor and uh, the brass body for those very clutch duels, I think is quite nice. We have the Bray Shaman of the Wild with Trader Kin. I can't remember if Trader Kin got heavily reworked. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, it still just does its damage and the Bray Scream as well. On the flank, a huge vanguard coming in. It's going to be triple centigors, including the new ROR. Hey, I haven't seen these in action yet. It's the Grog, Grog Hooves of Wolves Run. So these guys, of course, uh, do have the perfect vigor and regeneration. So pretty badass for sure. And the Blood Brute Behemoth. So some very heavy metal units coming in here for the Beastmen. Now for Papa Palpatine, very excited to see what he does here with the Lizards as well. Chameleon Skinks have always been very good against Beastmen. Minotaurs, Razorgors, Centigors, Gorgons, Jabber Slice. I feel like I'm rapping a song here, but these guys basically are good against all of those aforementioned targets, right? So a lot of light armor on the Beastman roster for them to mulch on. Skink Oracle, uh, this guy I think has a little bit of a bug where he sometimes shoots twice now from the Chalgaldon, but he's very powerful, especially in his current state. Uh, Anti-large, armor piercing, a very, very good counter against Torox potentially if he can sit and shoot and isn't chased. We got Krokar with Hand of the Gods, so talk about some mean sniping. With Krokar, Plus any sniping from the Skink Oracle, I mean, you're going to be able to burn down some targets very quickly if the stars align. So Chameleon Stalkers on the far side, curious to see how well they do against Centigors with their precursor ammunition. And the backfield is going to be Star Spears with shields to help against some of the large beasties, and that is it. So Hand of the Gods going down, brutal damage immediately on the Bray Shaman. That's got to feel real bad. And the Bray Shaman responds with the Traitorkin, so at least he does get a spell off before he gets Karate Chop, but hot damn! Hot damn, Joe Rogan. That definitely doesn't feel good. So here on the flanks, let's see the precursor ammunition in action. You have to give a charge order or else they don't really use it. So the way that the Chameleon Stalkers use their ammo is you give a charge order. And when they get in range of the target they're charging, they use it. So it also looks like they run. Okay, maybe that was changed. I don't remember it working like that in the very early access. But it looks like they throw some of their ammunition. And Krokar does bounce over and attacks those guys. So that's good to know. Maybe he like clicked on them while he was running or they just kind of do it automatically. I was always under the condition or opinion that opinion but uh, the belief that basically it was when you charge so torox moves in and uh, the classic gorbel symptom you'd, you'd think he wouldn't get knocked over but he does by the skink oracle so the beast men off to a really really rough start not a whole lot they could have done maybe hiding their caster a little bit further back and keeping it in the trees knowing that it was going to be a snipe target with the crocar plus troglodon combo but nonetheless the grog hooves of wolf's run here getting some really nice damage against crocky g and then the pigs are also going to be jumping in so crocar taking some big damage and torox is uh, just going bulls deep here in the back line oh that's so good i could totally be a, a t-shirt like bulls deep and it just has you know torox doing some work now hunting down the skink oracle is very nice he's quite quick 55 speed a little bit poison but the skink oracle isn't gonna have time to turn and shoot which is big and also the blood brute behemoth comes out of nowhere with the steel chair he was hiding behind the rock but now he's here and look at the scaling damage crocar is getting absolutely worked on so he pretty much has the same ability as Deathmaster Snickich, where he does more damage the more health something is missing. And the Centigore is going to be charging in, and Torox the Brass Bull really just being a huge beast here. He's the Blood Beast. And Krokar is broken. That is a big, big win there for the Beastie Boys as they are able to crump the Krokar. So now the Troglodon's trying to get away. As far as the rest of the Dino Army goes, it looks like it's going pretty well for them. You know, clearing out the Razor Gores and Chaff units on the other side, keeping pretty healthy numbers. Popcorn Cohort, Chameleon Stalkers, Full Health Spears, Full Health Chameleon Skinks. There's certainly a lot of good stuff going here for the forces of the Dinos on that side. But overall, I think the Beastmen are still in a commanding position. Having killed uh, Krokar and the Skink Oracle really needs to get some buffering. Like, it needs to get back to this side of the battlefield and get behind some spears and start shooting. At that point, you know, I think there will certainly be some, uh, you know, good opportunities. And yeah, very nice recovery too here from the forces of the Beastmen. They lost their caster almost instantly, but... You know, some good pursuit and some good isolations led to this uh, this situation here. So, Skin Oracle does have 75 speed, 64 on Torox, but the Centigors are going to be much quicker. Yeah, but it looks like the Skin Oracle might be able to move through them, kind of path and find a way, and they're not quite in front of it. So, if you're in this situation and you're trying to stop the Skin Oracle, you want to move ahead of it and then attack backwards into it. 
so they get a better uh, concave surround. So Torox and Brass Bull moving in after the Skink Oracle. The Opal Amulet has been popped to give it a little bit of ward save. A very, very good veteran play here from Papa Palpatine. Running through his own spears is going to be dragging many of the Beastmen forces back in here. But Torox is on the hunt, and uh, he really is living up to his name. Aside from that meme in the beginning where he kind of got caught and knocked over by the Troglodon, for the most part, he's been a very... Uh, you know, dominant presence here, just chasing down his targets and really causing a lot of problems. Although I suppose the Bloodroot Behemoth really has been the key to victory. With the scaling damage after Croc R did take about 60-70%, that's really been the big big play in my opinion. So, Popcorn Cohort on the hunt going after the Bloodroot Behemoth, but I think the Behemoth plus Torox could turn and kill them very quickly if they want to. However, if they do that, then the Skink Oracle is going to be able to turn and shoot, and I can't tell you how many games with Beastmen or many factions that I thought that I had won, and then suddenly I realize there's still like three or four units of Chameleon Skinks and they are just going to start poking me down. So yeah, this is, Torox going to jump in, right? But the Skink Oracle is now going to turn and start shooting and watch the damage. Let's see if he still has that double shot, which I'm pretty sure is bugged. There's one and two. Yeah, that is like insane, the amount of damage they get. It's a shame because it's such a cool unit, but I mean, I don't know if that was working as intended. I'm pretty sure in the patch notes they said something like, uh, you know, there were going to be problems. And I remember talking... Uh, when we had the early access and that I believe there's there should be like an early patch coming soon to fix a couple things like the Wargor chariots and yeah hopefully that'll come sooner than later because it's certainly tough to like do competitive tournaments under these circumstances when there are like you know bugs like that that are really really brutal not that this is like the worst thing in the world but I'm talking more like the Wargor chariots so the troglodon moving in attacking the grog's wolf wolf grog wolf thing mob man bear <laughs> sensigor the grog hooves of wolf's run and uh the chameleon skink spitting up a good little fight a little bit of poison coming in a lot of sora spears here certainly problematic but i think beastmen are getting pretty close to army losses especially considering that the skink oracle did get broken and i'm pretty sure the grog hooves will be able to chase them down and just you know make sure it doesn't come back yep there it is very very low in leadership Balance of power looking pretty damn good for the forces of the beast people. Really, really nice game. It was very, very fun to watch. Cool to see Torox in action and, you know, seeing someone other than Morker is uh, very exciting. And I feel like Malagor is going to be the one that you see all the time now. But I like to see like a monstrous infantry lord, you know, very much in the vein of uh, Nakai actually be used decently and be effective. So there he goes, working through the Sara Spears, the mighty blood brute behemoth. Still uh, being a brute, you know, getting some of that uh, action here against these Sora Spears. The, a lot of anti-large, though, and a fair amount of firepower. Might actually break it, but I think Torok is too much. He's the, the Rob Zombie bull, the blood beast, if you guys are looking for the reference there. Rob Zombie has a song called Super Beast, and it's basically Torox's theme song. So, there goes the blood brute behemoth. Farewell, my sweet prince, with negative two leadership. You will be broken. Oh my god, there's like a crazy... Some thunder and lightning outside. I think it's just the garbage truck. The, the industrial sounds of Los Angeles. Glorious. But the Blood Root Behemoth, going to be hunted down by the Chameleon Skinks, shouldn't come back. I mean, is there a chance for the dinos here? Is there some conspiracy theory that we can perhaps embrace? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. We have a couple of Chameleon Stalkers coming back with their Precursor ammo. It looks like they had a little bit left. The Grog Hooves are back. Some Chameleon Skinks in the distance. And yeah, the Blood Root Behemoth should be going down, but the Blood Beast is popped, doing some nice AoE damage here. And now you can see the mighty Torox leaping through the Skinks. They have very pitiful armor-piercing and melee, so uh, well, as well as with their ranged attacks, it's not super good, but we'll take a look anyways just to evaluate it. Yeah, 3 AP. I mean, uh, I guess it's not one, so it is something, but Torox able to break them, and now I'm sure he'll be able to rear charge into the Sara Spears and uh, finish the job here. We'll do a little bit of fast-forwarding as he moves in and grinds through those units. Army losses is upon us, but man, what a scrappy game. Palpatine doing an excellent job, you know, keeping this game going and just making the right decisions, but in the end, the Blood Beast was too much! Well played to uh, Robane here, a Rob Bane. I'm not really sure about the pronunciation. If you're watching, my friend, let me know. But uh, yeah, that was a fun one. Thank you for sending in that replay. Torox up to 2,000 value. Uh, the caster killed instantly. So, you know, both players kind of fought from the deficit at several points, which was cool. Caster was killed instantly. You know, he had to fight without that. And then Palpatine lost, you know, Krokar very early and had to scrap for most of the game without his main lord, who's very expensive. But yeah, it was great. So yeah, let's see, evaluating these guys didn't quite pay for itself, but again, I think it, it did pay for itself in terms of the overall state of the game by really nuking Krokar. Uh, wow, 2,500 on the Grog Hooves. Okay, that's really impressive. And other, you know, MVPs, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I like the army. I'm trying to think about what it would struggle against, really. I mean, you'd think it would struggle really bad against, like, Chameleon Skinks and things like that. Uh, I think if Papa Palpatine maybe had just, you know, had a little bit more caution and, you know, was a little bit more careful with Krokar, I think he would have been able to clinch the game very easily. Uh, you know, with another cooldown to Hand of the Gods coming off and, you know, using it to kind of protect and keep a tighter formation. But, but yeah, it was great, man. The Blood Beast was was uh, very fun to see. And it was cool seeing the Skink Oracle and the uh, the Stalkers, who usually do okay. I I'm kind of on the fence about them. I, I haven't had a chance to really get in and try them too much myself. But overall, I think they're a fun unit. And I look forward to trying them in a couple matchups, like especially versus Empire against like Flagellants, State Troopers, Halberds, all that kind of stuff. I think they might have 
a small niche. Anyways, well played. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you on the other side. Take care of yourselves and we're back in business, baby.